Chapter 111, Fellowship Early on the morning of New Year's Eve, the two team leaders of the intellectual team specifically came to inform Yu Bing and Jiang Chun that every New Year's Eve, the young people would hold a party in the dormitory building. The two of them had just arrived this year and they were afraid that they didn't know, so they specifically came over to invite the two of them to participate. In her previous life, because of her poor health, she had gone to bed early today. Now that she had recuperated for half a year and had caught up in terms of nutrition, she wasn't affected by occasionally staying up late. Yu Bing agreed happily. As soon as the two team leaders left, Wu Jin came to the door. Yu Bing, there's a gala for young people every year on this day. I was wondering if there could be a change this year. The villagers and the young people can hold one together. I've discovered that there are always invisible barriers between intellectuals and the villagers. If there can be such a social event, it might be very useful in breaking the barriers and integrating the two sides. Yu Bing had actually discovered this problem too. After all, when everyone came to the desolate countryside from a prosperous city, they would subconsciously feel superior. They felt that they were educated and knowledgeable, so when interacting with the villagers, they would have a slightly condescending attitude. Yu Bing lowered her eyes for a moment and thought for a moment before saying, Village chief, I think this is very feasible. I'll communicate with them later. Moreover, we can make it a little grander. After all, this is the first time. Wu Jin raised his eyebrows and asked expectantly, What new ideas do you have? In Wu Jin's heart, Yu Bing was a very thoughtful and knowledgeable intellectual. She often came up with new ideas unexpectedly, so every time Yu Bing had an idea or suggestion, he would always look forward to hearing it. Yu Bing smiled. It's not a new idea. I just want two people from both sides to come out and create a show together. Wu Jin nodded in agreement. That's a good idea. It's best if we choose people with influence on both sides. When Yu Bing heard this, she stared at Wu Jin expectantly. When Wu Jin saw this, his expression froze. Seeing the meaning in Yu Bing's eyes, he waved his hand repeatedly. He didn't hesitate when dealing with enemies, but he couldn't bring himself to go up on stage to perform. Yu Bing continued to persuade him, Village Chief, you're the most influential person in the village. I plan to go up on stage to perform as well. Just follow my lead. I've already thought of the content of the show. We'll act out a skit. You won't have to sing or dance. You suggested this first. You have to set an example. Wu Jin could only agree helplessly and comfort himself that it was just a skit. At least he didn't have to dance around in front of the entire villagers. Yu Bing pursed her lips and chuckled. I still lack a young boy for this skit. Remember to look for one. Wu Jin sighed. All right, I'll go announce it first and inform everyone. Let's set it at seven in the evening. At that time, everyone will be free after dinner. Yu Bing added, you'd better get the cadres to mobilize every family and get some prizes. Otherwise, I'm afraid that if the villagers don't perform enthusiastically, with just the young people's performance, the meaning of us organizing this event will be lost. After they discussed it, Wu Jin went to broadcast. As soon as the news was out, the villagers immediately became more enthusiastic. Putting aside the prizes, there were no entertainment programs in this era. Entertainment was slightly better in the city, but in the village, they would just eat and chat at home. Now that there was a program to watch, everyone worked much faster when preparing for the New Year's Eve dinner. Wu Jin finally pulled the accountant Mr. Wei over. Mr. Wei was popular in the village and had some influence. Yu Bing pulled the female youth team leader, Tian Jing, over. Tian Jing had come to the village to support the construction when she was 16 years old. She was already 23 years old. She was young but experienced and was very popular among the female youths. Yu Bing spent half an hour editing a skit from the future in her past life. As she read the finished script, Yu Bing silently apologized to the original author for plagiarizing. The four of them rehearsed in the village committee's office. Yu Bing had condensed the original work into a skit that lasted less than 10 minutes, so there weren't many lines. It took everyone half a day to finish rehearsing. They usually ate dinner early on New Year's Eve. Yu Bing and Jiang Chun finished eating just after 5 o'clock. Thinking about tonight's performance, Yu Bing suddenly thought of how Shali always stayed at home to work alone. After thinking about it, Yu Bing took two ropes and went to the Xiao family's house. The Xiao family was already done eating. Xiaoli had just taken a shower and was about to finish weaving the bamboo mat in her hand before watching the performance. No, it was more accurate to say that she would listen to the performance. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 112, Encouragement After Yu Bing entered and greeted everyone, she walked towards Xiaoli. Xiaoli, did you sign up for the performance? Shali opened her unfocused eyes and shook her head in disappointment. Then, she smiled. 
I can't see, so I can't participate. Yu Bing sat beside Xiao Li and said casually, Then if there's a chance for you to perform a show, what do you want to perform? Xiao Li replied seriously, Sing. Yu Bing reached out and touched Xiao Li's hair. Being blind doesn't affect your singing. You can also sign up. When Xiao Xing heard this, he looked at the two of them with mixed feelings. He hoped that Xiao Li could show off more, but he was also worried that Xiao Li would hear those malicious words if she was exposed to everyone. Xiao Li might have also thought of those people's malicious words. Her smile faded slightly, and she said timidly, I think it's better for me not to participate. Misfortune specialized in finding the unlucky. But no matter what, one had to refuse to submit first before one could overcome fate. Yu Bing sighed to herself and encouraged, Xiao Li, a great person once said that the path is winding, but the future is bright. This applies to the country and individuals. You have to move forward firmly at all times. Don't care what others say. You should learn to resist those injustices. Xiao Li lowered her eyes and said, Is resistance useful? Yu Bing thought for a moment and replied, Resistance might be useful, or not, but resistance can serve as a wake-up call for many people and let them see you and your attitude. Perhaps some people will still feel disdain, but some people will change their minds because of this. At that time, it will become useful. Where there is oppression, there is resistance. Xiao Li hadn't gone out for many years, and no one would come to the Xiao family's house. Previously, when she went out, her brother would accompany her. The Xiao family was like a shield to Xiao Li. Her sense of security was only in this small world. However, apart from safety, this world couldn't give her anything else. She didn't have the innocence that she should have at this age. She could only see the suffering that her blindness brought her. Xiao Xing didn't have the recklessness of a youth, but he still had the temperament of a youth. He still fought against the injustice of this world and never gave up. When Xiao Li heard this, she pursed her lips and tightened her grip on the bamboo basket. Seeing this, Yu Bing continued, Of course, the relationship between you children isn't something as exaggerated as oppression, but they're still displaying malice towards you. It's not your fault that you can't see, nor is it an excuse for them to bully you. Young people should be high-blooded and unwilling to be subdued by any force. I hope you can resist and fight. You have to understand the importance of resistance and learn to grow. Everyone has to learn to take brave steps forward and not give up on themselves. Xiao Li was silent. Xiao Xing stopped working, as if he was waiting for something. It was very quiet. After a while, Xiao Li looked up and said quietly, Sister Yu Bing, I want to try singing. Yu Bing held Xiao Li's hand and said firmly, All right. Then sing. Xiao Xing had a complicated expression but didn't say anything. He lowered his head and continued working. Yu Bing said gently with a smile, you have to dress up well to perform on stage. Xiao Li's hair hung in front of her chest. When she was young, Xiao Xing would only comb it like this. When she grew up, Xiao Li naturally inherited Xiao Xing's skills. Yu Bing did a princess-style shawl braid, which was from the future, for Xiao Li. These days, girls basically had ponytails, braids, or short hair. When Xiao Li appeared at the rice field, the little girls were immediately attracted to her and chattered about their hair. After knowing that it was Yu Bing's work, everyone continued to stare at the braid as they tried to figure out how to braid it. There were also some who wanted to bully Xiao Li for not being able to see and tried to grab her braid directly, but they were glared at by Xiao Lin. The other girls also stood up for Xiao Li. Wang Xia even wanted to beat those people up. Xiao Li hadn't interacted with so many people for several years and was a little nervous, but with Wang Xia and Xiao Lin protecting her, she naturally wouldn't be bullied. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 113, Revealing Her True Thoughts Yu Bing was also silently paying attention. Although there were people with ill intentions around Xiao Li, there was no lack of kind-hearted girls. Seeing that Xiao Li slowly relaxed, Yu Bing began to ask about the various matters concerning the gala. The hosts were a man and a woman. In the past, these two people were paired up the most often. They could be considered tacit partners. The male intellectual team leader, Wen Jiang, collected and registered the program schedule for the intellectuals. The villagers were registered by the female director, Zhao Lin. Because there were prizes this year, the intellectuals registered much more enthusiastically than in previous years. Before the gala began, many villagers also ran forward to register after initially hesitating. It started at 7 o'clock sharp. Most of the intellectual youths were performing artsy things like singing, dancing, memorizing poems, and performing comedies. The villagers had a lot of tricks up their sleeves. They danced, sang, played swana, cut paper, and performed military boxing. There was also an old man who pretended to break a big rock with his chest. It was said that before the new regime was established, he had learned street tricks to earn money. 
As for the other 60-year-old man, he was a martial artist. He had grown up in Shaolin Temple and had only renounced asceticism more than 10 years ago. He could chop stones with one hand. It was said that two fingers were enough. Now, he didn't exercise enough, so his martial arts skills had weakened. There was also a middle-aged woman who could stack 10 different items on top of each other, such as bowls, chopsticks, small sugar jars, and a series of small items one on top of another. She could keep them from falling through the balance between the contact point of the items. The knowledgeable youths all lamented at the fact that although the villagers weren't as knowledgeable as them, everyone had something they were good at. They couldn't do what others could either. Compared to everyone's brilliant talent shows, the purpose of Yu Bing's program was that everyone could have a moment of relaxation and joy after a year of hard work. Yu Bing's show was scheduled for the second half, and it was the only skit show. This skit might not be tonight's best show, but some funny jokes did make everyone laugh and alleviate much of the fatigue and tension everyone felt in their daily lives. In the end, everyone voted for the top three. Yu Bing didn't expect to be nominated as the first place. The Dragon and Lion Dance team got second place. Because it was the new year, this show had a festive theme. The old man who performed a one-handed handstand got third place. At the end of the party, everyone sang a festive song together at Yu Bing's suggestion. The song praised their motherland. Every morning, and before work started in the afternoon, the radio station would play this type of song for a while. Everyone knew how to sing it. With everyone singing, the party reached its final climax and ended at almost half past eleven in the evening. Whether it was the villagers or the knowledgeable youths, they all mingled together and chatted as they walked towards the village. They returned to their respective homes and waited for midnight. Yu Bing, Jiang Chun, and the three Xiao siblings walked at the back of the group. Xiao Li was very excited. She had sung a children's song tonight. Wang Xia had taught her this song at school. After she finished singing, she heard many people clapping. Although everyone was clapping enthusiastically no matter what show it was, Xiao Li still felt very excited. Xiao Li was very excited. She had sung a children's song tonight. Wang Xia had taught her this after she learned it in school. After she finished singing, she heard many people clapping. Although everyone clapped enthusiastically no matter what show it was, Xiao Li still felt very excited. When they passed by Yu Bing's house, Xiao Xing said, Xiao Lin, bring our sister home first. Seeing this, Jiang Chun guessed that Xiao Xing had something to do with Yu Bing, so she entered the house alone. Yu Bing looked at Xiao Xing blankly. Xiao Xing said to Yu Bing, thank you for tonight. Yu Bing raised her eyebrows and asked, about letting Xiao Li perform on stage? Xiao Xing smiled faintly. Thank you for that too. Then, his smile faded and he continued, my sister used to go out when she was young. Once, when I went out to work, Xiao Lin wanted to go out to play while our sister was asleep. When my sister woke up, she couldn't find anyone. When my sister heard the sound of children playing outside the door, she climbed out to play with them, and then... Xiao Xing stopped. Yu Bing didn't interrupt and waited silently. Xiao Xing continued after a while, when I got home, my sister was sitting at the door, crying so hard that she was twitching. Her face was covered in blood. From then on, I didn't let her go out, and she didn't want to go out again. It's been three years. Seeing how happy she was tonight, I suddenly didn't know if what I did was right or wrong. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 114, Happy New Year. Yu Bing thought of the three-centimeter scar on Xiao Li's forehead when she helped her comb her hair. Yu Bing understood Xiao Xing's actions, so she slowly said, in the past, she was still young and didn't have the ability to protect herself. It's normal for you to be worried about her and not let her out. But now that Xiao Li has slowly grown up, she has to come into contact with society. Take things slow. Xiao Xing nodded and then mentioned in embarrassment, I want to ask you for a favor. Yu Bing looked over in confusion. Tell me. Xiao Xing said carefully, you have a high education level. I want to ask you to come to my house to tutor my sister when you're free. She can't see, so the schools won't accept her. I can only teach her some elementary school literature and poems. I don't know how to teach her the rest. When Xiao Xing heard Yu Bing's words tonight, he felt that if Xiao Li could learn from Yu Bing, her level of knowledge and horizons would definitely be impressive in the future. Therefore, after hesitating for the entire night, he still made this presumptuous request. Yu Bing liked Xiao Li very much, so she agreed. No problem. I might not be able to go to your house every day, but I'll go over when I'm free. Xiao Xing's smile widened. Yu Bing. Thank you so much. Yu Bing smiled and said, You're welcome. I like Xiao Li very much and am willing to teach her. As soon as she finished speaking, firecrackers sounded outside. This meant that it was already past midnight and the new year had arrived. Every family in the village went out to light the firecrackers. 
lighting firecrackers meant exorcism and eliminating calamity. It also meant that the old would be eliminated and the new would be welcomed. It represented people's expectations for a good life in the new year. Every year, at this time, the festive atmosphere unique to the spring festival became even stronger. Xiaoxing looked at the light emitted by the firecrackers in the village and turned to look at Yu Bing. Happy New Year! Yu Bing looked at Xiaoxing with a smile. Happy New Year! She didn't expect her first New Year after her rebirth to be spent with Xiaoxing. Feng Kai, who had returned to City H, was also very busy. He returned home at about noon in December. The Feng family lived in a building of a mechanical factory. The house was 50 square meters with two rooms and a hall, but Feng Kai's family of eight lived in it. Feng Kai hadn't been home for the new year for two years. He felt mixed emotions as he looked at the familiar door in front of him and raised his hand to knock. The person who opened the door was Grandma Feng. At 70 years old, she was still quite healthy. Her white hair was combed back neatly. Grandma! Feng Kai shouted happily. When Grandma Feng saw Feng Kai, she wiped her tears excitedly. You're back. Hurry up and let me take a look. She held Feng Kai's hand at the door and kept looking up and down. Then, she said in a choked voice sadly, you've lost weight again. When Feng Kai's sister-in-law heard the voice, she put down the spatula in her hand and walked out. Fourth brother is back. Grandma, let fourth brother in first. It's cold outside. Let's go back to the house to talk. Feng Kai quickly greeted his sister-in-law. Only then did Grandma Feng come back to her senses and pull Feng Kai into the house. When Feng Kai reached home, he realized that only Grandma Feng, his younger brother, and his sister-in-law were at home. As soon as they entered the house, Feng Kai's sister-in-law asked her son, Feng Yin, to call for them. Feng Yin shouted in a childish voice, Fourth Uncle. After Feng Kai agreed happily, he gently pinched Feng An's little face. Because the school was on break during the new year, when the kid at home saw his fourth brother, Feng Kai, he casually greeted him, then ignored him. Feng Kai couldn't be bothered. He only looked around the house carefully. He hadn't been back for a few years, but the house hadn't changed much. There was a bed on both sides of the window. His eldest brother's family of three lived on one side, and his two sisters lived on the other side. There was a cloth curtain around the bed, so there were two rooms. As for the two bedrooms at home, one was where Grandma Fong lived, and the other was where Mr. and Mrs. Fong lived. Fong Xian slept in a small bed in his parents' room. As he only came back once every few years, he temporarily squeezed into the lower bunk of the shelf bed that the three of them slept in. His sister-in-law and his nephew slept on the upper bunk. When Fong Kai saw this, he felt a little baffled. Why was this bed still here after his two sisters got married? He looked at his sister-in-law and asked curiously, Sister-in-law, why is this bed still here? Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 115, Fong Family After Fong Kai was born, Mrs. Feng's health began to deteriorate. Fong Kai could be said to have been brought up by Grandma Fong. Their relationship was very intimate. Grandma Feng's smile froze. She lowered her head and didn't dare to tell Feng Kai. Others always said that she was biased towards Feng Kai, but he was also the most filial. Grandma Feng was worried that if Feng Kai found out about this, Feng Kai would make a fuss. However, she didn't want to see her son in a difficult position. However, there was no point in concealing the truth. Feng Kai's sister-in-law sighed and said honestly, Grandma sleeps here now. When Feng Kai saw this, he understood everything. He punched the desk in the living room, startling Feng Xian, who quickly ran out the door. Feng Kai turned to look at his sister-in-law and asked solemnly, how are the rooms allocated now? Feng Kai's sister-in-law glanced at Feng Kai, then slowly explained the situation at home. Grandma Feng's original room was now occupied by his younger brother, Feng Xian. Grandma Feng had moved to the hall and lived under the shelf bed where his two sisters used to sleep. On the other side, the shelf bed still belonged to his brother and his family. When Feng Kai heard this, he sneered. Looks like that woman isn't pretending anymore. Is Feng Xian, a junior, older than grandma? In my father's eyes, your family of three isn't as important as Feng Xian? No, it should be said that all of us aren't as important as him. The current Mrs. Feng wasn't Feng Kai's biological mother. Feng Kai's biological mother had died when he was six years old. The next year, Mr. Fong was introduced to Lin Lin, who was two years younger than him, and she became his wife. Lin Lin's husband died and she married over with her two daughters. She only gave birth to Fong Xian later on. When Lin Lin first married over, she was a virtuous person. She took care of the family's matters well and disciplined her two daughters very well. She didn't say much at home. 
She was also very filial to Grandma Fong and treated Fong Yu and Fong Kai as her biological sons. Every time Fong Kai caused trouble and Mr. Fong wanted to hit or scold him, Lin Lin would cry as she stopped him. Even after she gave birth to Fong Xian later on, Lin Lin's attitude towards Fong Kai didn't change. At that time, Fong Lin felt that Lin Lin treated him the best because Grandma Fong would discipline him sometimes. Later on, under Lin Lin's scheme, he was sent to the countryside to support the construction. Fong Kai only understood when he arrived in the countryside that Lin Lin was doing this to pave the way for her children. Back then, Fong Yu could stay in the city because there was a vacancy in his uncle's unit. Moreover, he took the initiative to help out with half of the money. However, if Fong Kai wanted to stay in the city, he would need Mr. Fong to take the initiative to pull strings. Without the help of his ex-wife's brother, he would have to spend a large sum of money. Moreover, it was getting harder and harder to find a job in the city. The money that others wanted to collect would also double. Her two daughters were also at the age of marriage. If she wanted her daughter to get married and not be looked down on, her daughters had to have dowry. In addition, Fong Xian had already grown up. She had to find a job for her son and make plans early. Wouldn't Fong Kai get in the way? Therefore, Lin Lin began to scheme against Fong Kai every few days. After repeating this many times, Mr. Feng's determination to keep him wavered. He felt that sending him to the countryside could change his unruly personality, so he sent him away. As he thought of the past, Fong Kai's expression turned ugly. Grandma Fong said nervously, your fifth brother is not in good health. He is neurotic and can't rest well in the living room. When Fong Xian was born, he was very thin because of malnutrition, but after many years of recuperation, he was already fine. However, under Lin Lin's instigation, Fong Xian would cough from time to time. In addition, Fong Xian was tall, thin, and fair, so when he coughed, he looked a little fragile. Now, there was the excuse of him being neurotic, which could only deceive the kind-hearted Mr. Fong. When Fong Kai heard this, he clenched his fists. Like Lin Lin, Fong Xian was full of schemes. The two of them always deceived Mr. Fong. Fong Kai said sarcastically, What about you, Grandma? You're so old. How can you sleep well? Grandma Fong quickly said, I'm fine. I'm old, so I don't care that much, as long as you juniors are fine. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 116, Mr. Fong At this moment, the door was pushed open and Mr. Fong returned. Because Fong Kai didn't greet him in advance when he returned home, Mr. Fong was very surprised to see him. Then, a trace of surprise flashed across his eyes. Then, he immediately suppressed the smile on his face and returned to his usual serious expression. He said calmly, you're back. Because of their conservative upbringing, people in this era were always very reserved when it came to expressing their love in order to maintain their parental authority in front of their children. Fong Kai hadn't been home for two years. Seeing Mr. Feng's usual serious attitude towards him, he was a little disappointed. Dad. Mr. Fong nodded and said in a low voice, I didn't know you were coming back today. I'll go buy some more groceries. With that, he turned around and left. Before long, Lin Lin returned with Fong Xian. Because of Fong Xian's tip-off, she already knew that Fong Kai was at home in advance. As soon as she entered, she smiled and said, You're back for the new year. The house will be lively this year. After so many years of practice, Fong Kai had also learned how to maintain pretenses. Moreover, when dealing with someone like Lin Lin, he had to be better at pretending than her. Therefore, Fong Kai also smiled and replied, Yes, I haven't been home for a long time. I'm back to visit everyone this year. The two of them smiled and exchanged a few pleasantries before Lin Lin entered the kitchen. Because of Fong Kai's arrival, Fong Kai's sister-in-law hadn't finished cooking the dishes. Fong Yu worked far away and ate in the office canteen at noon. Therefore, after the dishes were ready, they were served on the table. When Mr. Fong returned home with the groceries, he saw the dishes on the table and smiled. I thought there weren't enough dishes, so I specifically went downstairs to buy some ready-made dishes. Lin Lin smiled and said, It's all because my son ran to inform me when he saw that his second brother was back. I went to the market to buy a fish before I went home. Mr. Fong nodded in satisfaction. You're the one who dotes on him the most. Fong Kai sneered to himself. All these years, what he admired the most was Lin Lin's efficiency. Everyone began to eat. Mr. Fong asked in confusion, Did your brother apply for your leave? When Fong Kai first went to the countryside, Mr. Fong used his connections to apply for leave for him every year. However, after the application was approved, he would let Fong Yu send it in his own name. Fong Yu wasn't allowed to mention his name. However, because Fong Kai went with resentment, he refused to go home for the first two years. 
It wasn't until the third year after his nephew was born that Fonkai thought of going home for the new year. However, when he left, the father and son fell out again. In a fit of anger, Mr. Fong didn't look for any of his connections for this matter for the past two years, so Fong Kai thought that Fong Yu had found someone to do it behind his back. Fong Kai didn't hide the fact that he needed Mr. Feng's help this time. We have a factory in the village and need the machines in the factory, so the village chief approved the application. Mr. Fong asked with concern, you're working in the factory now? Lin Lin stopped chewing and secretly pricked up her ears to listen carefully. Fong Kai replied, the factory will open after the new year. I came back to look at the equipment first. Mr. Fong revealed a gratified expression. Looks like you did well in the village. See, I was right to send you there. If I had stayed in the city and slacked off like you did in the past, you wouldn't have become so capable. Fong Kai tightened his grip on his chopsticks. His originally relaxed expression became a little stiff. He didn't speak, but Mr. Fong didn't notice. He was still smug about the decision he had made. Seeing this, Lin Lin lowered her head and ate to hide her joy. Grandma Fong knew that this was a source of sadness to Fong Kai. Unfortunately, Mr. Fong didn't notice it at all. Grandma Fong looked at Fong Kai nervously, afraid that the family would start arguing. Fong Kai was no longer the impulsive 17-year-old from back then. A self-deprecating smile appeared on his face. That's right. He had the image of being a good-for-nothing. Although he had been mischievous since he was young, he never denied what he had done. After the money theft incident that Lin Lin had planned back then, as long as he and Lin Lin went against each other, Lin Lin would believe all of Lin Lin's slander towards him. To Fong Kai, his father's distrust was the reason he felt hurt. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 117, Parting on Bad Terms Fong Kai took the initiative to mention Grandma Feng's living situation. Mr. Fong also felt very guilty about this. The house was small. Lin Lin took out the hospital certificate of her son's mental illness and said that she wanted her youngest son to stay in the room. At first, he refused, but Lin Lin cried beside him every night. He had seen Lin Lin's contributions to the family over the years and she rarely made requests. This time, her request wasn't for herself, but for Feng Xian. That was why he had shamelessly looked for Grandma Feng. Therefore, in the face of Feng Kai's question, Mr. Feng could only explain this helplessly. Fong Kai suspected that Lin Lin had gotten someone to write a fake certificate, but the investigation would take time. He only had a few days of leave, so it was impossible for him to investigate it clearly. Hence, he said, Dad, why don't you give up some space in your room or brother's room? Grandma is old. If she doesn't rest well, she might suffer from mental problems too. Mr. Fong had also thought of this problem, but Lin Lin said that the doctor had mentioned that the room was too small and could make people depressed, so Mr. Fong gave up. When Fong Kai heard this, he felt that Lin Lin was playing tricks, so he said calmly, he just sleeps in the room and is usually in the living room. How depressed can he get? A hint of ruthlessness flashed across Lin Lin's eyes, but she couldn't refute this, so she could only lower her head and remain silent. Mr. Fong, who was already feeling guilty, was persuaded by Fong Kai. He decided to give Grandma Fong another room. When Fong Yu returned at night, the two brothers chatted happily. When Lin Lin went out to visit and Feng Xian looked for his friends to play, Feng Kai told Mr. Feng, who was sitting on the sofa while reading the newspaper, that he wanted to buy equipment on credit. Before Feng Kai could finish saying that he had to get this done before he could join the factory, Mr. Feng became angry. Mr. Feng had a straightforward personality and he was righteous. He felt that this harmed the interests of the factory. Nonsense. They want to get equipment without paying a single cent? He Mountain Brigade is so far away from the city. Who can guarantee that they will be able to repay the money? When can they pay it off? Fong Kai promised Mr. Fong, I'm also in the village. I promise that I'll help the machinery factory keep an eye on this debt and make the village pay it back. Mr. Fong looked distrustful. That's easy to say. Who doesn't have a good attitude when they borrow on credit? But when you chase after them to pay back the money, their attitude will be much different. Let me warn you, don't use my status in your factory to make promises. Fong Kai said anxiously, Dad, this is very important to me. If the village doesn't pay it back, I'll use all the money I earn in the future to pay off the debt. Believe me, okay? Fong Kai didn't believe in factories that had yet to be opened, but he believed in Wu Jin's character. Fong Kai had been in the village for so many years and had long heard of the Wu family's deeds. Wu Jin had personally approved of using this machine for production. Even if the factory wasn't built, he believed that Wu Jin definitely wouldn't go back on his word. However, Mr. Fong didn't understand this. 
When he heard that Fong Kai planned to sacrifice himself for the village's factory, he felt that Fong Kai's idea was unacceptable. Hence, he said without thinking, you overestimate yourself. Don't you know how much a machine costs? Let me tell you, you don't have that much credibility with me. Give up. On the first night Fong Kai returned, the father and son parted on bad terms. Fong Yu also felt that Fong Kai's guarantee was unreliable. He secretly pulled Fong Kai to the courtyard downstairs to dissuade him. Only then did Fong Kai have the chance to tell him about the factory. He also told him about the situation in the village and the village chief's character. He also told him the plan that he hadn't had the chance to reveal just now. Only then did Fong Yu realize that Fong Kai had really matured. He looked at his brother in relief. I'll talk to dad again. He's afraid that you're being too impulsive. If he hears this, I believe he'll agree to help you talk to the factory. Fong Kai's emotions, which had finally calmed down, began to fluctuate again. He said to Fong Yu angrily, don't tell him. It's fine if he doesn't believe me. Anyway, I'm a liar in his eyes. I won't beg him. I'll think of something myself. Brother, don't worry about this. With that, he turned around and left. Fong Kai planned to look for his friends to see if he could get it done. He had to settle this. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 118, Receiving Red Packets On the morning of the first day of the new year, Yu Bing and Jiang Chun were woken up by the sound of firecrackers in the village. After getting up, the two of them washed up and also set off a string of firecrackers at the door before opening the courtyard door. At this time, the firecrackers were different from yesterday's. Setting off firecrackers on the first day of the new year were a way to pray that everything would go smoothly this year, that the farmers would have abundant grains, and also herald the arrival of new spring, when everything would be full of vitality. Yu Bing and Jiang Chun put the pastries, candy biscuits, and the dates that Xiao Lin had specifically picked in the mountains a few days ago into the bamboo basket. If anyone came to visit, they had to offer these snacks as refreshments. It was a tradition to visit relatives and friends during the new year. Yu Bing carried the two portions of sakama and egg cake, jam, vegetables, sweet potatoes, and so on, and headed to the Song family to pay New Year greetings. The entire Song family was present. Yu Bing greeted everyone with a smile. At this moment, the little baby was already six months old and slightly chubby. Yu Bing took out the red packet from her coat pocket and stuffed it into his pocket. Mrs. Song watched as Yu Bing carried so many things and scolded, You're spending money again. This sakama is expensive. The last time I went to the county city, I saw someone selling it. When I asked the price of the luxurious version, it was 1.85 yuan a caddy. Also, these jam are not cheap either. Song Li and Wang Yun were also a little speechless when they heard the price. Yu Bing had raised the price by at least two caddies. In the commune, everyone's New Year's gift usually didn't exceed one yuan. Yu Bing's gift cost five yuan. Yu Bing couldn't say that she had made these things herself, or else the fact that she was doing business in the black market would be exposed. She could only smile and wheedle. Isn't this the first time I came to visit? I have to go all out. Besides, there's only one spring festival a year. I won't buy it next time. I won't buy it next time, but I'll make it again, Yu Bing Xin thought to herself. Yu Bing brushed over the matter and changed the topic. Then, Mrs. Song took out the red packet she had prepared and handed it over. Yu Bing quickly refused. I'm already part of the workforce. I'll be laughed at if I accept red packets. President Song said with a straight face, don't refuse a gift from an elder. Besides, you're not married yet. Take it. Song Li teased, Yu Bing, you have to accept it. I'm the same age as you. If you don't accept my parents' gift, they might not give it to me next year. At this moment, Wang Yun also took out a red packet and said with a smile, that's right. If don't accept our parents' gift, we won't be able to give this red packet away. Take it. We're all family. It's our family's tradition to be children before we're married. Song Wee also said, I'll testify to this. I kept getting red packets until the year I got married. If you don't take it, my parents will ask me to return the red packets from those years. I'll find trouble with you if that happens. Yu Bing felt touched when she saw everyone laughing and teasing her. Her eyes turned red. All right, I won't stand on ceremony then. As she spoke, she carefully placed the red packet in the inner pocket of her cotton shirt. For so many years, only her grandmother would give her red packets when she was still alive. Her parents only gave red packets to Yu Pan and Yu Wu. She was already used to this kind of differential treatment. After Song Li and Wang Yun became familiar with Yu Bing, they could tell that Yu Bing had a hard time in her family. Therefore, every time Yu Bing came, the Song family would treat her like family. 
They hoped that this kind and capable girl could feel the warmth of a family too. After you being chatted with Mrs. Song and President Song for a while, Wang Yun and Song Li pulled you being into the room and the three of them whispered to each other. Song Li had been feeling very troubled about deciding what job she wanted to do recently. Director Song wanted to find her a job at the Supply and Marketing Club, but she felt that it was boring to work at the Supply and Marketing Club. It usually wasn't very busy there, except on market days and holidays. Song Li pursed her lips and said, I feel that that job is just about knitting while gossiping. I don't have the patience to listen to that. Wang Yun burst out laughing. You don't know how lucky you are. This job that many people consider a dream job is actually so worthless in your eyes. Indeed, it was good to be able to do their own family's work while chatting and get a salary. This was also why many people felt that working in the supply and marketing club was a good job. Even Yu Bing wanted to live such a life, but no one doted on her or planned for her. From her previous life until now, she knew that she could only rely on herself, so she didn't dare to slack off and could only force herself to become stronger. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 119, Meaningful Every time her parents received benefits from her, they would be much more amiable to her than usual. In her previous life, because she craved this trace of warmth, she worked hard to earn money, putting her already fragile body under more stress. However, when she was lying in bed with cancer, instead of her family's concern, what she received was their anticipation to divide her inheritance after her death. Therefore, she was used to being busy. Only by being busy could she feel at ease. Yu Bing looked at Song Li and asked seriously, then what do you like? Song Li tilted her head and thought about it for a long time. I don't think there's anything I like in particular. In the past, she had gone to school every day and didn't have to think about anything. Now that she was suddenly asked this question after graduation, she felt a little lost. Yu Bing asked again, then if you don't want to be too idle, do you want to be very busy? Song Li was stunned for a moment. Then, she frowned and replied, no, I just want to find something meaningful to do. Yu Bing smiled and said, every job has meaning, but it depends on what kind of purpose you want to pursue. Although working in the supply and marketing club is very idle, the purpose of this job is to let everyone buy things. For example, the cleaners. Their existence allows us to live in a clean and tidy environment. There are also teachers, doctors, and police officers. The purposes of these jobs are to teach, save lives, and uphold justice. When Wang Yun heard this, she agreed. Yu Bing, you're right. Whether it's a big or small job, as long as you do it well, you'll be serving the people and contributing to society. It just depends on which position you want to contribute through. After hearing Yu Bing and Wang Yun's words, Song Li felt that her future plan was much clearer. Then I want to become a doctor. Although other jobs are also meaningful, saving lives makes me feel more accomplished. In the end, Song Li told President Song her thoughts. President Song looked at Song Li with relief. Out of a parent's love for his children, President Song definitely wanted her to choose a job that was high-paying yet easy and closer to home. Studying medicine was very demanding, but he was happy to see Song Li learn to be independent. After all, one's life was one's own. The company of one's parents only lasted for a phase. One had to rely on oneself to explore one's path in life. Because Wang Yun had acknowledged Yu Bing as her godsister, Yu Bing definitely couldn't forget to give the Wang family a New Year's gift. According to tradition, the second day of the Chinese New Year was when a married daughter returned to her house to pay her respects. If she returned on the first day of the Chinese New Year, it would be inauspicious. Although the establishment of the new regime dispelled this feudal superstition, most people still chose to return the next day as usual. However, the Wang family was a little special. After Wang Yun's mother passed away, her father didn't remarry. Every year, the number of relatives who came to visit the house was the highest during these two days. The two men, her father and brother, were too busy at home, so Wang Yun would go back to help during the day on the first and second day of the spring festival every year. This year, Wang Yun specifically came to the Song family's house to set off together. Yu Bing came early. After more than an hour, friends and family of the Song family began to come one after another. Seeing this, Yu Bing said goodbye to the Song family and left first. The Song family packed many local specialties and candy biscuits for Yu Bing and even stuffed a can of malted milk. Malted milk was a precious nutritious product in this era. It could be seen how much the Song family cared about Yu Bing. Yu Bing came with a pile of New Year gifts and left with a pile of gifts. Wang Yun rode her bicycle back to the Wang family's house. The guests of the Wang family had already arrived. There were two groups of guests. One was an uncle from the countryside who had brought his wife and children to see Wang Yun's father, Wang Qing. The other family was Wang Qing's subordinates. When Wang Yun saw her aunt, she frowned imperceptibly. 
Then, she led Yu Bing into the house to introduce him. Yu Bing greeted everyone gregariously. The gift Yu Bing brought was the same as the one she gave the Song family. Because of Yu Bing and Wang Yun's relationship, logically speaking, the New Year's gift for the Wang family should be more important than the Song family's. In addition, Wang Wei had helped her secure the loan from the bank previously, but Yu Bing and the Song family interacted more frequently. After weighing the pros and cons, Yu Bing finally decided to prepare according to the same standards. Yu Bing took this opportunity to thank Wang Wei. The two of them spoke alone on the balcony. In the Wang family's kitchen, Wang Yun was preparing fruits and snacks when her aunt walked into the kitchen. She said to Wang Yun seriously, Xiao Yun, why did you acknowledge a sister? You're pure-hearted and kind, but since we're family, don't blame me for being blunt. You're just gullible. How can you believe an outsider so easily? Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. Chapter 120, Wang Yun's Aunt She was just short of saying that Wang Yun had been deceived by Yu Bing. Wang Yun secretly rolled her eyes and ignored her aunt. Wang Yun's aunt was someone who could talk for a long time even without anyone talking to her. She didn't mind if Wang Yun didn't speak. You. Her name is Yu Bing, right? As soon as you left, Yu Bing pulled your brother to the balcony. I don't know what they're talking about, but it's obvious that she has ill intentions. Only her family knew about Wang Yun's difficult labor. Since this wasn't a joyous matter, the Wang family didn't intend to publicize it, so none of the relatives in the village knew about it. Wang Yun took a deep breath and said in a low voice, Aunt, I know very well what kind of person Yu Bing is. Even if I'm blind, my brother and father aren't. Just take care of your family's matters. Wang Yun's aunt didn't seem to hear the displeasure in Wang Yun's tone. She narrowed her saggy eyes and said with certainty, You don't have to make any excuses. They're naive and gullible too. How can your father and brother understand the thoughts of a scheming woman? I think she deliberately gained your trust to get close to your brother. Your brother is tall and handsome. He even works in the government. My cousin also works in the unit. Your family's wealthy background attracts those women with ill intentions. Therefore, your brother's wife has to find a woman with a known background. When Wang Yun heard this, she knew what the other party was up to. She sneered. You don't have to worry about my brother's marriage. Wang Yun didn't say much because it was useless to say anything. Wang Yun's aunt was an opportunist. Wang Yun's aunt didn't have the slightest self-awareness that she was a guest. She continued to say annoyingly, I have a niece who's very good looking. She's just right for your brother. They are a match made in heaven. Wang Yun laughed out loud when she heard this. Her aunt had never gone to school before. In order to matchmake, she was probably using all her knowledge to try to persuade her. It's rare for you to come here. You should go outside and drink tea. Wang Yun's aunt felt that Wang Yun didn't know what was good for her and was rebuffing her good intentions. I'm only thinking for your brother's sake because I'm your aunt. Wang Wei is not young anymore. If he doesn't look for a wife now, it'll be too late. Wang Yun glanced at her aunt. The niece you're talking about is called Fong Fong, right? Aunt Wang Yun's heart skipped a beat. She tucked her hair behind her ear. Yes. Wang Yun asked again, she's 22 this year, right? In the countryside, girls who were 22 years old but still unmarried usually had some problems. Normally, they would marry before 20 years old. Wang Yun's aunt didn't know how much Wang Yun knew. She said calmly, she's not married because my brother and sister-in-law can't bear to part with her. She's really a good girl. If you don't believe me, go and ask around. Everyone says that Fong Fong is the most beautiful and is worthy of your brother. Wang Yun's aunt kept praising the other party's appearance, but she didn't mention anything else. Wang Yun thought of what the other party had said when she met her fifth aunt in the commune that day and couldn't help but sneer. Since the other party was shameless, there was no need for her to give her face. Aunt, why are you only talking about her looks and not her character? For example, she pushed a female intellectual into the river and was caught on the spot. She's lazy, illiterate, and promiscuous. She's always gossiping and badmouthing others. Why? Do you think our family is too peaceful? Aunt Wang Yun's expression froze. She knew that this matter was a lost cause. She secretly felt rueful about the 100 yuan that her sister-in-law had promised her. She secretly cursed the person who revealed this to Wang Yun. If she found out who had ruined her plan, she would definitely tear the other party's mouth apart. When Wang Yun's aunt saw Wang Yun's cold expression, she argued guiltily, those people are spreading rumors. Um, I'll go out first. You can continue busying. Wang Yun threw the knife in her hand onto the stove angrily. If not for the fact that she was an elder, she really wanted to slap her. Wang Yun's aunt turned around and left the kitchen. She almost bumped into Yu Bing, who was about to enter the kitchen. 
Mr. Wang was the most capable relative in her hometown, so even if Wang Yun was a junior, she had to curry favor with her. However, she would not be polite to Yu Bing, so she said angrily, Are you blind? When Wang Yun heard this, she turned around and said seriously, Aunt, this is my sister. She's my family. I hope you can be nice to her. Wang Yun's voice was clear and loud. Everyone in the living room could hear her. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much.